Hello everyone, Seraphin here. Welcome back for more Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. When I last left you guys, I did a really bad thing and left a really nasty cliffhanger going on between uh, Ike and Black Knight here. But we're gonna go ahead and finish up said epic duel today. I'm hoping it'll be uh, hoping it'll be a good one. We'll see. So uh, you may notice from the Black Knight stats here as we take a look real quick, just to see just how awful we're gonna be getting our butts kicked. Uh, he's got capped strength, capped skill, capped defense, and five extra from Allendite, which is absolutely wonderful. And uh, he also has 27 speed, which means he cannot be doubled, basically. And which is ridiculous, because he's a freaking armor knight, but he's that fast, so. Uh, 60 HP also, not fun. Uh, I believe we've talked about Black Knight before at one point, but he also heals a little bit each turn. I think it's like 6 HP or something like that. It might even be as much as 12. I think it's like 20% of his maximum health or something. And then he's got Luna, which is even better. So he potentially could do a whole bunch of damage to Ike in a single swing if he procs that. And I don't have Nihil or anything on Ike, so he has the potential for that to happen. However, Black Knight does not have Nihil either, which means that my Aether can proc on him. Which, uh, unfortunately is really the only way to defeat the Black Knight is to proc Aether. You really don't have a prayer of killing him otherwise. So, I believe I have the maximum possible chance of procking Aether with Cap skill. It still only amounts to, I think it's 27%, which is, it's halfway decent, it's, one, it's a little more than 1 in 4. But you need to proc it, I'm going to guess, at least twice. Because even with one proc, it's not enough. Because I believe I only do like 7 damage to him on a regular attack with Ragnall. Yeah, that's ridiculous, and he does 19 to me. So you have to rely on Aether procs to beat the Black Knight, there's no other way to do it. And uh, if you don't have a, re a reliable ability to heal Mist, or heal with Mist rather, in this fight, it's even more difficult. Because, well, let's face it, Ike's gonna get his butt kicked, which is not fun. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a stab and see how this goes between Ike and the Black Knight. Hopefully we get some Aether procs and take him down, otherwise this is gonna be a really interesting battle. And I believe you are timed as well in this battle. This will be the third time I've defeated you, he says. First in Gallia, second at Delbray. Third time will be different. If I stay true to my father's sword skills, I can't lose. Do you ever think that using your dad's techniques on the guy who killed him would be a good idea? Like, I mean, he's got a point, right? My father robbed himself of using his stronger arm. If he had, he would not have lost to the likes of you. Let us test your stronger arm, then. Yes, let us do that. Show me your strength. No ether proc. But no Luna proc either, so I need to actually heal Ike because a Luna proc will kill him at this point if it procs. So we're gonna go ahead and keep Mist far back of here, but we're gonna we have a physics staff, thankfully, so we can just long distance heal Ike. And we're gonna need to be doing that on a pretty regular basis. Especially if Black Knight happens to proc Luna, that would be abysmal, but it's been known to happen. It's so, alright, no Luna proc yet. I believe he's just gonna shrug off all that damage I did to him. He only heals six, alright, he heals ten percent of his maximum, which is basically fully but recovers from my attack. Oh, there's a Luna proc. This is gonna hurt. That's 34 damage, I think. Yep. Ouch. Not fun. So, uh, Ike has yet to proc Aether, unfortunately, but... Let's go ahead and heal him up here real quick. It doesn't even fully heal him, that's the problem. And then the real question is, do I dare attacking him myself? Because that might be dangerous if he procs Luna on his turn. Uh, strength and skill and luck. Interesting choices there, Mist. So, I think what we do is just let him come at me one more time. I need to... It, you have to proc Aether. You just have to. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. So, we're going to go ahead and let him come at me. I think I've got five or six turns to defeat him before the, the artificial time limit runs out. So, we need an Aether proc, ladies and gentlemen. We need to rely on that. And he's not getting Luna yet, which is good. Still no Aether proc from me. Now the question is, do I gamble and hope that he doesn't proc anything on his turn? Protect the Black Knight. Because he needs it. Do not interfere. This man is my prey. I need no assistance. Yeah, you're right, he doesn't. Then, uh, get the girl! Kill her before she... Yeah, really? You're just gonna kill a girl? She's like, no, I'm not leaving. And actually, she can probably handle taking this guy out on, by, on her, by herself and be fine. He does have a spear, though. That's really annoying. Although his stats are god-awful. So we're just going to leave Miss there, she'll be fine. 
and uh, do we do we take the gamble here? Because if I proc Ether, I will I only heal a handful of HP actually, and if he does manage to proc Luna after that, I'll still die. So yeah, I don't I don't, I don't think we do that. I think we just physic up one more time, but we are running out of time. So we'll have to wait and see how this goes. All right, Ike. Um, you know what? Let's take a gamble. We're gonna take a stab here. We're gonna see how this goes. As long as he doesn't proc Luna, I'm okay. I'm okay. There's an Ether proc, and that put a nice big dent in him. No Luna, please. Okay, no Luna. Good. And now I gotta wait for him to do that again, because if he procs Luna the second time, then I'm dead. This would have been a good idea for me to use an angelic robe or something on Ike. I don't think I had one though. Is the problem despair? These guys are aren't really gonna do anything. That this guy's gonna chuck a spear at Mist uselessly, probably. I don't think it'll do much to her if it even does hit. Okay, that's a reasonable decent chunk of damage there, but again, she'll be okay, she's fine. Worst case scenario, you can actually escape with Mist in that back row there. And honestly, if Ike's getting his butt kicked, he can escape too. Okay, good. No Luna. Rock Ether, please. There we go! That is a dead black knight, ladies and gentlemen. Two ether procs in a row, it's all you need. You've grown stronger, I commend you. And down he goes. In a big old thump of big ass armor. And of course, Ike gets a level out of it, because why wouldn't he for defeating his fiercest rival? He didn't get strength though, which is annoying still. He's still two points off from capping that, but I'll take luck. He's capped almost everything else. And Ike's like, oh my gosh. Also, where did he go? Like, notice his, he's not still kneeling there, like he's just disappeared. This guy's like, wait, what? The Black Knight got taken out? Activate the traps. That doesn't sound good. What's going on? This rumbling. And here comes Nasir. Interesting. The castle is collapsing. Oh, Ina's okay. Apparently she can stand up even. She got whacked by the Black Knight, but she's still able to get up. That's impressive. Miss, we have to go. Yep, let's bail, because this whole place is coming down. And Nasir is going to grab Ina, and they're going to run. I guess those Dayan soldiers are just going to stay there and get crumpled. This whole place is coming down, though. It's not going to be fun. Yeah, here it goes. I'm not sure how they arranged for traps to collapse this entire fortress. It's not like they have explosives or anything. You can see these poor sods are going to get caught in the rubble, and they're probably not going to make it. Sucks to be them. Maybe you shouldn't have collapsed the whole freaking castle. And there it is gone. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of still there, but not really. But yeah, that, that castle done got blowed up almost. Ike's like, I finally avenged my father. And Mist is overjoyed that he's okay. I'm not as good as father was. There's no way I could ever defeat him. I wanted to show how strong Father really was by kicking the Black Knight's booty with my own weapons and my own strength. Dad was great, and so was Mom. So are you, brother. Isn't that adorable? So, in case you were curious, it is possible to lose that battle. Obviously, if Ike gets killed, it's a game over. And you need to start that whole chapter preceding it over again. So, the whole thing if you lose to the Black Knight, you have to do the whole chapter again. And uh, if you don't manage to defeat him within the time limit, the, the chapter also just ends and you don't get the credit for killing him. The, the game does proceed even if you don't kill him. But obviously this little interaction is different. It's like, uh, you know, I could, I wasn't strong enough or some yada like that where I was just like disappointed he couldn't do it. Uh, you still end up proceeding with the story. You still end up keeping Ragnell anyway. You just don't get credit for defeating the Black Knight. So it is possible to proceed without killing him, but uh, I, I think it's a lot more satisfying to actually defeat him. She's sleeping in the back. And how about Nasir? Oh, we're talking about Ina, I imagine. Nasir is with her. He's been taking care of her the entire time. So Nasir, or Ina rather, is the one that Nasir basically betrayed us for. I'm sorry for escaping and causing all the problems I did. Yeah, you've got some explaining to do, Lucy. I sensed Ina and I had to go look for her. You saved her, didn't you? I don't know how to thank you. 
What's the connection between you and Ina anyway? Ina is my only granddaughter. Your granddaughter? That can't be. You're not old enough to... It may be difficult for you Bjork to believe, but we of the Dragon Tribe live for a very, very long time. So Nasir is a dragon. That wasn't already evident before. When we reach a certain maturity, we stop showing almost all signs of further aging. So they're like elves. I mean, he's at pointy ears, too. I mean, look. Remember Prince Kurthnaga and Goldoa? Yeah, he was a great kid. Yeah, he's like, he's like a hundred. <laughs> he's like the youngest in Goldoa, but he's still like stupid old. His father's even older. His father's absurdly old. They called him, I believe they call him a living fossil in this game. He's like a thousand years old or some nonsense. Why did you save Ina? She was your foe. You're willing to put yourself in danger so she could escape. I assume she must be dear to you. Well, that's a pretty good assumption. You did that for a traitor? I took Mist's medallion and gave it to Ashnard. Even so, you still helped me. There were reasons for all of this. Would you like to tell me about them? I'd like to help. I cannot. At least not yet. It's not the answer I wanted. I'm not your enemy. Yeah, uh, well, it's really hard to believe at this point. King Dayan had Ina with him. For her sake, there was nothing else I could do. He's like, are you willing to display your loyalty? We're going to go to the Crimean capital and we're going to kick Ashnard's booty. And I need help. And I want a freaking dragon. If you're not our enemy, then prove it by aiding us. In the strength of your belief in me, I swear I will not betray you again. Well... How much do you know about the medallion? Did you realize what it was when you gave it to Ashnard? He's like, I'm pretty sure I know more about it than you do. Wow. Merely gaining possession of the idol does not allow King Dayan to release the Dark God. He needs Altina to sing the Galder of Release. That's correct. I, too, investigated Palmini Temple. Huh. Yet King Dayan doesn't know that, and he's kidnapped Leanne. Sounds like she knows where the Heron Princess is being held. When she awakes, we shall ask her about it. Ah, interesting. So that's chapter 27, and we've we have defeated Ike's greatest rival. We move on. There are only two chapters left, everybody. There is one more after this, and then the final chapter. So we're getting close to the end of this situation here, and hopefully a very fun and peaceful resolution. Yeah, I'm sure that'll exactly how it'll be. Ike avenges his father in single combat, then he sleeps well past dawn. The first time since his dad died that he's done so. Crimean army and Lagu's allies have passed the trial of Nato's castle, and it only leaves the capital itself. The opponent that awaits them is none other than Ashnard, the king of Dayan himself. If they lose here, their hardships will have been for naught. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how it goes. The final battle is approaching. An air of exaltation pervades the camp. That's a great word, isn't it? But Ike remains focused on the road ahead, readying himself for what is to come. Fantastic. I'm sure nothing horrible will happen at all. Twisted Tower, this one is called. This is kind of an interesting chapter, and it's not like a bad one or anything. It's just interesting. Leanne is being held in Gritnia Tower to the south, so we got one more stop to make before we get to the capital, actually. So Ina just happens to know where they are. This here's like, I'm sorry we can't tell you more than that. Let's go do some fighting. At daybreak, I'll be taking a small force to Gritnia Tower. That's where they're holding Leanne. And Rayson's like, well, I'm going too. So is Tabarn. Oh, heck yeah, Tabarn's coming. I forgot about that. Have you thought about what the main army will do? Yes, I have. May I count on you? Of course, she's the freaking princess. So she's going to get preparations ready for storming the capital. And bring Leanne with you, yes. Here's our report. Uh, wow, our results of last battle. MVP Ike. Wow. Don't say. Look at all this money I still have. This is a boatload of cash. I need to, like, start making some... I could be... You know, the problem is you can only forge one weapon per chapter. And I really haven't been doing that. I'm a little ashamed because I could have been doing some cool stuff this whole time, but I just haven't been. Who is this holy knight with whom we can speak? Probably Sigrin. Oh, it's Tanith. Never mind. That was close. So apparently Tanith is teaching Elincia how to fight on a Pegasus. I do not know how to lie or offer false praise. 
Isn't that nice? If you were not destined for greater things, I would petition the Apostle herself for your enlistment. Wow, that's impressive. Training my recruits has been my lifelong duty, and yet this is the first time someone's been so appreciative. My other pupils refer to me as the Great Demon. Isn't that so, Marsha? And she's like, what are, you what are you talking about? We don't do that. We all love our sincere and devoted commander. More like Great Angel Lady. Perhaps we should try something special. What? Not, not that. Suppose we are facing our Dayan's elite troops, led by Ashnard himself. How do you expect to fight without them at least without at least one killing attack under your belt? Oh jeez, wow. I will try it, she says. Uh oh. I want to grow stronger. To reach that goal, I'll do whatever it takes. Match your desire, I will fall back on the methods I use while training on the, the Apostles' bodyguards. Here we go. And Marsha's like, uh oh. Come on, maggots. She really is a demon, Marcia says. <laughs> I'll come back later. So, it, it says you're supposed to get something because of the three stars, and you don't actually look like you get anything, but what the game is trying to tell you is that the three of them, your three Pegasus characters, now can do the triangle attack, which is a pretty big staple of the series, as I believe I've showed you guys at least once in one of the previous installments of this game on this channel. Uh, when the three Pegasus units attack the same guy, uh, the last one to initiate will guaranteed crit. And they'll have like a little special sequence that they're like, Yeah, triangle attack! Ah, awesome! And then it's like, yeah. Pretty sweet. I mean, it's alright. You don't really that you don't really get a huge chance to use it, but... Alright, so we don't need really need anything else on Ike other than Ragnall now, because, well, it's got infinite uses and it's the strongest sword in the game, so he doesn't need it. We're gonna leave that in the convoy. And I think we're still good on equipment with everybody else for the most part. Uh, maybe not so. Maybe that's not the case. Let's... Do I need some more lances on Nephany? Let's do that. Uh, Ilyana could definitely use some replacement weapons here. Let's grab another L-Thunder for her. I think she's almost A support, or not A support, uh, A rank in Lightning. That means we can get uh, Rex Bolt pretty soon. Rather be able to use Rex Bolt. We don't actually have it yet. Although that is going to change fairly soon. Can I get a different hand axe for... I could use a short axe on Oscar now, I suppose. And Rayson definitely doesn't need all this stuff. Not really sure why he was holding that to begin with, but I actually don't know that we get access to Elincia in this chapter. Because I think she's too busy doing other stuff. Get another Elwyn for Soren. I don't want to put it running out or anything. I'm not concerned about a whole lot of stuff. I've got plenty of equipment left around, so we, and we can always buy more later. So I think we're just going to get rolling here, and there's not really a whole much else to do. How are we doing on XP? We got level 16, 17, 14. Eh. I could feed some extra XP to people, but maybe I'll do that some other time. We're going to go ahead and save real quick and get started on Chapter 28. Probably not going to get super far into it this episode, but we're going to get as far as we can. It's a pretty straightforward chapter. And here we have Grittany, a tower. It looks interesting. Poor Leanne. And here we have this creepy looking dude with no eyebrows. Uh, his name is Izuka. You brought this girl here on direct orders from His Majesty. Then he gives all these special commands. Don't let her escape. Don't let her get sick. Don't let people kill her. Hard to keep one of these birdies healthy. Why is it you disturb my meditations? I'm thinking here. Um, I'm here to relieve you on guard duty. Don't see much reason for a guard in this place. Uh-uh. <laughs> Britannia is currently overflowing with veteran soldiers, not to mention those repulsive beasts, the feral ones. Oh great, more feral ones. Trying to escape from this place is the same as committing suicide. Not that I've tried, mind you. That is so weird. If the girl were to leave her room, she would be unable to stop her from getting killed, or we would be unable to stop her from getting killed. Oh, you found a blind spot. The problem with us scholars. Yeah, okay, whatever you say, pal. 
Oh. They're getting riled up again. Hmm. Don't let the Heron girl take one step outside this room. This guard is very, uh, observant. Snaggle tooth cheese stealing. Thinks that guy fell a little far from the nest. Nothing to be afraid of. I won't hurt you. Just sit there and be quiet, okay? And she's like, wait, what? So, uh, yeah, that's kind of creepy for a number of reasons. Something really odd about that tower, Ronald says. I mean, really odd. He senses several of the beast tribe, but something smells terrible. The tower holds lagoos who have been given medicine. These drugs warp their true shape. You talking about the ones that can't change forms, like the ones in Begneon? Yes. As far as numbers, a conservative estimate would be 30. Well, that's not a good. There are tigers and cats, hawks and ravens, and... Oh good, there's dragons. There are some from the dragon tribes as well. No more than 10. Probably no more than 10. <laughs> You have to fight ten dragons like you? She's like, nope, not like me. They are much stronger. Oh, good. That's hardly encouraging. It's gonna be dark soon, Tabarn says. It's rather embarrassing, but we of the bird tribes don't move well in the dark. Darkness means next to nothing for my kind. Depending on who we face, it could prove to be a significant... There are more of the beast tribe than any other. It is because we are close to Gallia. Huh. You sure you want to be on our side? Uh, yeah, that's why I'm helping you. What do you think, Ronolf? My grandchild is impressive, is she not? Not what I was going to say, Grandpa. <clears throat> Once it gets dark, we're going to be at a disadvantage, so we need to go forward now. Let's do it. We don't have time for complaints. Ronolf's like, yeah, yeah, all right, fine, whatever. Here's the creep again. Where's the heron girl? And the guard? Hello? I've been had! <laughs> this is discovered. His majesty will hang me up by my thumbs. Yeah, that doesn't sound very pleasant. How can I divert attention from myself, he says. A strange group of insurgents approaches the tower. They're well armed. You say insurgents have appeared? Mixed group of subhumans and humans. Then we must give them a warm reception. General Hedwin's mages have engaged them, but they're not, they're not nearly enough. Release the feral ones. Oh, good. The monsters? But no need to worry. I've just given them their medication. They've all been trained not to attack any day in soldiers. Do it now. The enemy must not be allowed inside the tower. I'll prepare my escape. Yeah, good plan, dude. So, uh, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of lagoos in this map, and they're not fun, and they hurt. <clears throat> what a glorious mix of birds, beasts, and dragons we have to greet us. So, Tabarn's like really, really upset. Barn is not the only one who is filled with rage to warp the gift the goddess has granted us. This crime shall not go unpunished, and Raisin charges headlong into battle. Yeah, great plan. We must rescue Leanne for Raisin's sake as much as anything else. And Ra Ronald's really not happy about it either. And, oh, good. So, uh, we don't actually get to Barn, quote-unquote, but he is on the battlefield, and we do have the ability to command him. He is a yellow unit. So, that's kind of neat. Uh, we don't get to, like, tell him exactly what to do, but we can be like, hey, go here, attack that, and do this other stuff. And, uh, yeah, he's absurdly strong. I don't know if I got to show you guys his stats last time we saw him back in Serenus Forest, but, uh, yeah, those stats are insane. Uh, he gets to remain permanently transformed with no reduction to his stats because of his Laguz band, because he's a Laguz royal. And, uh, yeah, 37 freaking attack. With an infinite durability weapon, and he's borderline unkillable. I don't think I've ever seen anything bad happen to him at all, because it's just not possible. Uh, on top of that, he has an ability called Cancel, 
that I believe only the birds can get access to, and it basically just nullifies attacks sometimes. And I think it's based off of his skill, and he's got 36 skill, which is absurd. 196 hit rate, so he never misses, pretty much. 83 avoid, he's never going to get hit, and if he does, he's not going to take any damage. And yeah, 45 attack, that's absolutely ridiculous. So Tabarn is, a, is just a monster in every facet, and he will stay that way the whole time, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and pick our squad here. I think we're just going to run the usual crew. Oh yeah, so we actually have access to Nasir now as a unit, and he is a dragon, and he's a pretty nice dragon too. Uh, in fact, depending on if you defeat the Black Knight or not, uh, you get one of two dragons. If you do not defeat the Black Knight or the time runs out, whatnot, uh, you will get Ina instead. And she, I think, is significantly lower level, significantly less powerful than Nasir. Uh, but if you do manage to defeat the Black Knight, then you get Nasir, and he's pretty great. And these are his untransformed stats, by the way. So, 20 strength... 24 resistance or 24 defense, 27 resistance. He's a tank. He hits like a truck. He's not too slow either. 22 speed's not fantastically impressive, but it's pretty okay. And uh, he has Nihil, which is great, and he has an ability where anybody standing next to him at the start of the turn regains their status or loses any status conditions they have, which is wonderful. So he's pretty great. I think we're gonna field Nasir just because it's fun. Um, I don't think we need Soth for this fight. I'm trying to think if there's any reason to bring Soth, and I'm drawing a blank right now. Let's see if there's anything worth stealing on this map at all. I don't believe so, but there's, there's at least three red dragons as we can see here. These guys are monsters. Uh, 35 strength is ridiculous. They have amazing defenses, both defense and resistance. They're not absurdly fast, but they're not slow either. 18 and 17 speed. That one's got 20 speed. That one's even faster. Good lord. So yeah, they're some of the more some of the most challenging standard enemies in the game. Obviously. I mean they're freaking dragons, why wouldn't they be? And here we have the boss of this map in the tower itself way over here. This is General Hedwin. And uh, he has the Rex Bolt Tome. This is the highest, most powerful magic in the game that you can get access to. He does drop it upon death, which is nice. And the only one who can use it is Ilyana, and we're hopefully gonna get her to a point where she can do that. Uh, all she needs to do is rank up her lightning rank to A, and then we'll give her an arm scroll to boost her to S. And then she'll have Rex Bolt for the final chapter, which will be nice. It does give you plus three skill from equipping it. Not, I guess that's the I guess the benefit of that is extra crit. It does have ten crit built into it already, which is kind of nice. But Hedwin himself also has a bolting tome, which is incredibly annoying. Uh, that being said, though, oh, we got a sleep bishop over here. It looks like. Got some more healers. Other than that, though, it doesn't look like really anything to steal. The Lagoos aren't really going to have anything, because they just have natural weapons anyway. So yeah, we don't need Soth for this map. Uh, we're going to kind of focus on a few core units. I want to get some people to max level before... Not before, but hopefully we'll have them to, in a position to become max level by the end of the last chapter. And we're going to focus primarily on Jill... Ileana and Nephany. I want at least those three to get transfer bonuses if we can help it, because those three need the most help in the uh, transfer department. They, if they have some transfer bonuses, they become much, much, much better. We'd like to get them maxed out if possible. Ike doesn't need it. He really doesn't. He's amazing in Radiant Dawn, so he doesn't need transfer bonuses, but he'll probably end up maxing out anyway. Um, I wouldn't be upset about getting... Uh, someone like Oscar to max level. I don't think it's going to happen, but it's possible. Uh, Soren doesn't need any help. Marsha kind of does. You know what? Let's field Marsha, although I'm probably going to be honest with you, I don't think she's going to cap out. She's still only level 10, and we've only got two chapters left, so we will see. That being said, I don't think I gave her a lot of good equipment, did I? No, she's barely got anything, so we're going to see if we can steal some stuff from other people who aren't n are not using them. Like this spear, for example. And then we're just gonna put all this stuff away and see what else we can get for her. I think Silver Lance is called for here. Flame Lance? Does she have some decent magic? Three. No, she does not. Alright, so Flame Lance is not a good idea. Uh, we will, however, go with Lagoo's Lance because there's a lot of Lagoos in this map, as you might imagine. And I think that's gonna be pretty much it. I think we'll just get rolling with this, although Nephany doesn't need that door key either. Alright, well, in that case, let's go ahead and get everybody positioned accordingly. 
I, I you know I like Boyd a lot as a unit, and I I, mean, I insist on always using him for the most part. But the unfortunate reality is I don't think we're gonna be able to keep him for much longer. Especially not going into like the final chapter when it's just he's he's not a liability per se, but he's just not quite where I would like him to be at this juncture. And in fact, uh, let's go ahead and grab the demi band for Nasir because he actually makes decent use of it. And do we have any like elixirs or anything we can give him? Vulnerary is kind of pointless because it's not going to make a difference on him. That's all right. So we're going to equip the demi band, and then you guys can see his transformed stats. Slightly transformed stats. So yeah, now he's got 30 strength, which I guess is only 25 with the demi band, unfortunately. 24 speed, 28, 27 defense, and 30 resistance still. So even with the demi band, nice big chunk of power here for Nasir, and we're gonna make use of him. And I believe, no, not in this one. In the Radiant Dawn, Dragon Breath has range one to two, and this one it only has range one. So, at any rate, let's go ahead and. Sadly, we're going to get this chapter started, but we're not really going to make any progress in it. So apologies for that. We had a lot of story to take care of, and obviously we had to deal with the Black Knight fight. But that is over with, so we're going to go ahead and push and take care of this chapter. Hopefully fairly quickly. It's not a, it's a... It looks bigger than it is, It really, honestly, because it takes a little while to get moving from your initial spot. Get all the way down this little foresty trench area into this main spot. But once you get to this area, it goes pretty quick. So we will have this wrapped up. Uh, ideally by the end of the week. So stay tuned for that for the second to last chapter, and then we'll push on to the final one. And that'll be awesome. So stay tuned, as I said, and feel free to like, leave a like and a comment on this video if you are so inclined. And feel free to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I would very much appreciate that. And until next time, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.